Okay, so let's get going on this uh, bush plane comparison for all the models available. So uh, the big set of parameters for uh, what we're working on is my wife and I uh, live here in Oklahoma right now. We're building this airplane. It's going to West Africa and to Niger. We're flying medevac. Ah, ah, staying alive. We're flying cargo. Uh, we're flying people. Um, we're flying tools and supplies. Um, and then at the same time, like with all of this, we have to do this on a, on a budget. We want to buy the most airplane we can with the least money to do what we're trying to do. Um, here's a list of airplanes that I started with and started going through. So some of these airplanes you may say, oh, they're not a bush plane or they are a bush plane. Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, so I thank you. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. This is just a list of airplanes I started with and I'll show you why we ended up with a Bearhawk 5. So that list is Bearhawk 5, Cessna 180, Cessna 182, a Mall M7 235, a Cessna 185, a Cessna 206, a De Havilland Beaver, a Helio Courier, a Murphy Moose, a Found Aircraft Bushhawk, a Cessna 210, a Cherokee 6, an RV 10, a Compair 7, a Kodiak, and a Zen Air 801. So that's the list of airplanes I started with that are kind of in this category or could be adapted into this category. Um, you guys may disagree or agree with that list. Uh, this is a farce. I should be teaching this course. If you think there's airplanes that should be added to that list, leave them below. Um, I'd love to look at more airplanes. Um, and so that, that's the list we started with. And so here's what we're going to do. All these airplanes are true four place airplanes. They have four real seats or more uh, in them. And so like we're going to leave that first four place airplane thing. They all, they all fit that. Some of these airplanes are six place airplanes. Some of them are four place. You might be able to fit six, but they're all, they're all in that four plus range. Um, and so the next thing we're going to go, this is the first one. We have some long cross countries, 800 miles plus. So I wanted to be able to cruise at a decent cruise speed. Um, so the, that cruise speed I determined for us was I wanted to be more than 140 miles per hour. So that's gonna automatically knock that Zen Air 801 off. It's, it's gone. Zen Airs are a 100 mile an hour airplane. Um, they're slow, uh, they're great airplanes. If you guys are looking for an airplane that is fairly cheap to build, I think you can build a decent one for under 100,000. Um, it makes, it's a great airplane for short hops into short strips. Um, the nose gear on them is a little bit uh, questionable. Um, as far as being a rough strip uh, landing gear, but um, they're great airplanes. If you guys need a short hop airplane, I know some guys using them in Central America, hopping in and out of little jungle runways and stuff, and they're fantastic for that, but they are not fast. So that gets rid of that. Our next category that uh, I had a requirement for was um, I wanted something that could go at least a thousand miles in range. Um, and so the rest of these airplanes fit that. Now you guys may argue here and there, yes, no, it won't do that, but all these airplanes have options for long range tanks, extended tanks, the experimentals, you can do whatever you want. So you can put belly tanks, fuselage tanks, um, whatever you need to do to make them do that. So um, the rest of these airplanes fit that. They'll, they'll go that far. Um, and they, most of them are gonna require modification with fuel tanks and stuff to make them do that. But um, so that we're gonna leave them all alone on that. They'll all do a thousand miles um, if modified. The questionable one on this list is the Mall M7. Um, there are long range tanks for that, but not super long range and the useful load. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave it alone for now, but um, the Mall M7 is kind of questionable on that. Um, so the next one is gonna be auto fuel capable. So this is where it gets interesting. We don't have any auto fuel or any avgas in country um, and very, very little jet fuel. We have jet fuel at one airport. And so uh, the requirement for auto fuel you could run jet fuel. I mean, you have the option of all the turbo props and all that kind of stuff, right? But one, you're exorbitantly more expensive on acquisition costs to get into those. But two, we only have jet fuel at one airport and that is at the main airport um, on the far Western end of the country. And so we have lose all ability to refuel out away from home base. We would have to tanker fuel there and back on every single flight. And so um, everything that doesn't burn auto fuel is getting kicked off the list. And so, Kodiak and Comp Air, they're both gone. Kodiak, um, awesome airplanes, but you're talking two plus million dollars to acquire one. I declare bankruptcy! 
Um, Comp Air 7s are extremely sketchy airplanes, or if you have one. I did go and fly one, should have done a little more research before I got in one. Um, but those airplanes have killed a lot of people um, from pilot error, structural failure, all of the above. Uh, if you see one for sale, they're, they're cool. I mean, they look cool. From them, they're they're a very uh, very shoddy airplane is is a good way to describe them. So those two are going to get knocked off. And so what you may notice is that I didn't knock off a ton of these airplanes. Um, and here's the reason why: for us, they're going to get knocked off. But for people operating here in the United States that run want to operate one on auto fuel, and that's a requirement, it can be done. Um, so you can go experimental exhibition category, and the rest of these airplanes um, that are certified. Uh, can be uh, configured. So a 185, a 206, um, you could convert those with either a methanol injection kit or an EFII kit, um, but you cannot do it in certified category. A Beaver, uh, you can get an auto fuel STC for a Beaver, so that's not an issue. Helio Couriers, there's no auto fuel STC for them, but same category. If you wanted to, you could methanol inject them or uh, you could put EFII on them and you could make it work. Murphy Moose, no issue. Found Bush Hawk, same deal. You could go experimental category and make it work. Um, Cessna 210, actually you can do a Cessna 210 certified on auto fuel by doing a methanol injection kit from Airplanes in Wellington, Kansas. So they have a kit that basically it's a full automated system uh, that does methanol injection to help cool the engine off and lets you run on uh, 91 octane and above auto fuel. So 210 can be done uh, legally actually. Cherokee 6, no way to do it except for experimental category and RV-10, not an issue, you can make that work. Um, and so for us, those certified airplanes that don't have STCs don't work because we can't operate experimental exhibition category in West Africa, but for people here in the United States, that might be an option for you. Um, keep in mind, you are going into the highly modified category. I mean, you're, you're a test pilot at that point, but it can be done. So we're gonna leave those alone for now. Um, our next category was off airport capability in less than a thousand feet. Oh, come on. It's not a strip, that's a mountain. Please don't do this. That was great. How was it for you? Um, so where we're flying, um, you can find a thousand foot flat spot to set an airplane down just about anywhere in the country. It's a big desert. Um, and so the, the nuance here is that a lot of that is going to be extremely sandy um, and it's also 120 degrees in the country. So RV-10, not an off-airport airplane. Cherokee 6, you'd be amazed where people take a Cherokee 6. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of the world operates on Cherokee 6s and people don't realize it. Um, but at the same time, a Cherokee 6 <clears throat> loaded out um, you're gonna have a hard time in, in sand. You're gonna have a hard time in soft soil and stuff like that. And then at the same time, it doesn't really fit our category, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. And a 210, as much as I love a 210, it's not an off-airport airplane. There's no way you can oversize, oversize nose wheel or anything like that on it. So you get into soft sand, and you're gonna get into, you're gonna get into trouble in, in a 210. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the 210. And so this- I don't understand, is anyone hurt not on the surface, no, but I can tell people are disturbed. This is the list of airplanes that um, we end up left with. So our next category is gonna be parts availability. So this is a big one. So we're, we're working in airplane. Um, and so what I mean by parts availability is can I get a wing? Can I get landing gear? Can I get horizontals, elevators? Can I get parts or reasonably make parts um, to repair the airplane? Uh, and so when you're using an airplane in this environment and in this manner, like the airplane's going to get damaged in small ways here and there. You're going to take rocks, you're going to take shrubbery, you're going to, I mean, things like that are going to happen. Um, but what we're talking about here is like, can you get parts that would keep you from flying? So uh, for the found Bushhawk, they're cool airplanes by all means, but there's not very many of them. There's hardly any parts out there and they're no longer in business from my understanding. So um, found Bushhawks can get kicked. The Murphy Moose, Murphy Moose are cool airplanes. Um, you, you can do them with a radial. There's a guy, uh, Ray, I think his name's Ray Watson with Moose Mods. He's doing LS conversions in them um, and they seem to be doing well. I'm not a big auto conversion guy, but um, he seems to have possibly figured it out a little bit.
So uh, moose, mooses are cool, but the factory has just, the company has just changed hands and changed hands and changed hands and recently, I think the last year or two got bought again and they're not in production. So if I took a moose into a runway there and took something to the wing and I bent a spar off in the wing, you're either stuck repairing that wing as best you can um, or scratch building a wing if it's that bad uh, because you can't get parts. So if you if you damage an elevator, you are stuck building an elevator from scratch. Uh, and so I, I'm we're in the business of flying airplanes, not building airplanes, even though we've been building an airplane for the last while. Um, so that's where we're gonna kick the moose because there's not reliable parts from the manufacturer um, and there's not reliable parts on the used market. So. Then we're gonna get into Helio Couriers. Helio Couriers are awesome airplanes, one of my dream airplanes. If you look at Jungle Aviation Radio Service, JARS, JARS were the guys operating those back in the day. Um, and, and where you can take a Helio and what they'll do is absolutely amazing. But they're geared motors, um, which are getting harder and harder to find parts for and to work on. Um, in our scenario, we can't run one on auto fuel because we can't be ex exhibition category operating where we're operating. Um, and then on top of that, they're just, you, there's not very many of them out there anymore. So if you smash a wing off of one or you damage a slat or you damage, um, you're, either, you're gonna have to repair it to the best of your abilities, but if you need parts, there's no manufacturer to call and get parts. It's not gonna happen. And there's not very many parts out there on the used market. So we're gonna get rid of a Helio as much as I'd like to fly one. We're gonna get rid of a Helio now. So here's a list of airplanes we have left. And the Beaver, there's a lot of those Beavers out there. And there's a lot of parts out there and a lot of guys operate them commercially still. So while parts may be hard to get, the parts are available for Beavers. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave a Beaver alone for now. But our next category is we have a budget of acquisition costs of $200,000 with zero timed everything. So. You're not gonna do a beaver for that. It's not gonna happen. Um, beavers, you're you're probably in the 500,000 plus, uh, you know, to whatever you want to spend two, three million for turbo beaver stuff. Um, what I don't, I don't even know what one of those costs. Wikipedia is the best thing ever. Anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject. So you know you are getting the best possible information. But you're, you're, you're way high on acquisition costs. You're not gonna do a Beaver for under $200,000. Um, at the same time, you're running, you're running a radial engine. Um, so you can do a radial engine with an auto fuel STC from my understanding. Uh, but radials require a lot more service and a lot more parts. So then again, we're kind of borderline on the parts availability issue, especially because there's nothing for radial engines in West Africa. So. Uh, we're gonna kick the beaver off and then we're gonna look at the Cessna 206. Cessna 206s are amazing airplanes. I would love to be flying one um, But the thing with a 206 is by the time you buy one They man they bring a premium you, a 206 will bring way more money than a 210 typically um, And so the 206 even if you go buy an old 60s 70s model 206 and you strip it down refurbish it zero time of motor zero time of prop I don't think you can do one for under 200,000. I think you're closer to 300,000 to do one. Uh, by the time you put in avionics, a zero time uh, motor and all that kind of stuff. And at the same time, in our scenario, like we, uh, we can't run one because we can't run one legally on auto fueling country. So we're gonna get rid of the 206. For a lot of you, a 206 is a great airplane and a great option. Um, especially if you don't have an auto fuel or you're not trying to zero time. A 206 is a lot of airplane and you can take one a lot of places. You can oversize the nose wheel, oversize the mains. Um, 206s are fantastic airplanes. And kind of the same scenario with the 185. Uh, 185s are fantastic airplanes. You can do stall kits and wing mods. You can get the fuel uh, capacity way up on them. Uh, useful load's fantastic. I mean, you can get a 1,500 pound, 1,400 pound useful load out of a 206 or a 185, but you can't run one legally on auto fuel. And so that's our biggest, our biggest hurdle. And at the same time, I don't know if you guys have priced 185s lately, but it's, it is normal to see half a million dollar priced 185s now. Um, and you're not seeing them for under 200. Really, you're in the a used one with decent times and stuff. I mean, you know, a thousand hours on motor and stuff like that. You're, you're in the $250,000 range starting. If, if you guys have priced airplanes lately, it's gotten kind of crazy. So 
that's that's the deal on those two. We're gonna have to get rid of them because it doesn't fit fit our our scenario. So uh, the next one we're gonna go to is gonna be I want it at least would love to have more, but I needed at least a thousand pounds of useful load. So this is where the mall is gonna get kicked. So we were already borderline on the mall um, on the range, and so the mall M7235 is really. If you have one with everything it came from the factory with, um, they're an 800, maybe an 850 pound useful airplane. They're heavy. They're, they're kind of fat from the factory. Um, if you take one and strip it and rebuild everything you can in one, um, they're still going to be, be heavy. You, you might be able to get a VFR one with very little instrumentation to have a thousand pound useful load because they're a 2500 gross airplane. So you might be able to get one down to 1500 pounds, but you're it's hard to do it. Um, so the mall is really, really borderline and you can build one for under 200,000. You could buy an old one, um, strip it down, clean it out, put some avionics in it and a motor. And I think, I think you could do one for 200. Um, but still at the same time, it's, it's, it's just borderline on all that. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the mall. Um, because if you need to go a thousand miles, you're not doing a thousand miles with four people in the airplane, not happening. Um, you're a two place airplane at that point, if you can get that much fuel in the airplane. So um, that leaves us with these three. And this is where it got really hard uh, because all three of these airplanes are auto fuel capable. Uh, all three of these airplanes have parts. Uh, you, there are tons of 180 and 182s out there. You can buy wings, ailerons, I mean, everything you need for them. Um, parts availability is a non-issue. They all cruise over 140 mile an hour. I would say that they're all off airport capable, um, but this is where it comes down to our exact mission and what's gonna suit us the best, not necessarily what would be the easiest option. So a 180, I think you'd be very, very hard pressed to buy one, zero time of motor, zero time of prop, um, have decent IFR capable avionics in it, I think it'd be very hard to do that under two hundred thousand dollars. A one eighty two would be a little bit easier, just because it's not a tail wheel, so it's not bringing crazy money. Um, but both of those are it's possible. But what we're looking at here is to run one on auto fuel. The only motor you're allowed to have is a four seventy. So you can't peep honk it. Um, you can't put five twenty cylinders. You can't put a five fifty in them. Um, if you do any of those big engine mods, you're automatically out of the auto fuel ring. So. Um, if you're here in the States, these airplanes are pretty, pretty great, but they are a four place airplane. Um, I think you can put a third row in a 180, but at the same time, if you have a third row in a 180, um, you're either crawling through the baggage door or crawling over the seats to get into the third row. And so you have that all that safety factor there. If you did manage to crash the airplane and it's on fire, you now have people in the third row that have to climb over a row to get out the door after four other people have already gotten out. Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! What's the procedure? What do we do, people? Um, and so that that gets hard. Um, and so uh, this is where I mean, this is where it got hard for me to decide: should I go buy a 180 or a 182 and refurbish it and use it, or do I start from scratch and build the Bearhawk? So now what we're talking about is a airplanes. Um, Bearhawk Five is a 3,000 gross airplane. 180, 182s can be into the 3100, 3200 range if you do some wing mods. Um, but they're a little bit heavier uh, on the empty weight side. So um, you're talking about a little bit less useful load than a Bearhawk 5. Uh, but they're a 230 horse airplane. So a 230 horse 180 on a 120 degree day at full gross weight trying to take off out of a sandy runway, you are gonna use almost a thousand feet of roll. Um, I mean, it's, you're going to, you're going to be right there on the edge of that thousand foot, no margin operating. It's the same deal with the 182. You're going to, with that small motor, 230 horse motor, you're going to be right there on that edge at full gross weight, um, operating. Whereas the Bearhawk, um, at 3000 pounds, you're taking off in 500 feet or less. Um, we are three, the motor that's going in this airplane is 350 horse operating on 87 octane pump gas. And so, um, like that gives us the ability to operate in and out a thousand feet with margin. And then at the same time, um, we have the Bearhawk doors, which you can kind of see in the back, and I'll put a picture up of those. 
The Bearhawk doors are amazing. They're they're like a mall door, um, but bigger on this model. So this airplane has a, a six foot door on the side of it. So for our purposes, operating a litter at, in and out of the side of the airplane, um, hauling cargo, hauling people, like getting in the third row is easier than getting into the first row. Uh, and so the ability to use the airplane uh, is exponentially higher on the Bearhawk simply because of the door configuration and because of the amount of horsepower we have. So we're, you're going from an airplane that we're gonna be climbing out at six, 700 feet a minute, loaded up on a hot day, to this Bearhawk will do well in excess of a thousand feet. 1,000 feet a minute on a hot day, fully loaded. Uh, so way more margin, way better climbing. We're trying to get up out of, uh, out of the dirty air as soon as possible on our cross country. So I'll, here's some video real quick of flying, uh, flying in Niger. So you'll see this haze, literally that's all dirt. All that is is dirt and every day there's dirt. So literally on all of our cross countries, you're shooting for eight, 9,000 feet. Um, you wanna pop up above that as fast as you can well, in the Bearhawk, you know, if we're light, we're, we'll be seeing 2,000 feet a minute plus um, with that big of a motor in the front. And then heavy, I mean, we're still going to see 1,200, 1,300 feet a minute climb out. So getting above that dirt into the clean, cool air is way faster in the Bearhawk. And then at the same time, this is the this was kind of the, the last factor that I used that, that pulled the trigger on building a Bearhawk versus buying an airplane is you're talking about buying a 180, 182 that is a 50s, 60s, maybe 70s model um, in the 182s. So you're, you're a 30, 40, 50, 60 year old airplane, maybe more. Um, they're just old. Um, so the technology in them's old, um, the amount of junk in them from over the years, extra wiring, everything. So you're talking about stripping one down. Um, they're, they're just old and um, Whereas the Bearhawk, you get a brand new airplane, um, easily repairable. Um, Mark Goldberg with Bearhawk is amazing. Uh, any parts you need, you can get. If you smash a wing off the airplane, you can get new wings, you can get a new fuselage, you can get landing gear, you can get seats. You can get all these parts of the airplane readily available um, and you call Mark and Mark sends you the parts. Whereas with the 180, 182, you're not calling Cessna to get new parts because they're exorbitantly expensive. So you're shopping used parts from guys all over the country, having to go look at them, send somebody. So you're operating with used parts for the most part. Um, some stuff you may be able to get new, but most of the time you're, you're operating with used parts instead of replacing with new, ready to go, um, unused stuff. And so really when you just start weighing all of those, and the, and, and the goal here was to build the ultimate bush plane workhorse for our scenario. Um, the Bearhawk wins and so uh, it's not the easiest option um, building one is no joke whenever whenever somebody tells you oh it took me you know there's a lot of Bearhawks that took five years plus to build um, because they you're building a large airplane um, with lots of systems lots of everything but um, the end result of what you get is in my opinion the ultimate uh, backcountry workhorse that can do everything you need it to do and you can do it on a fairly decent budget compared to buying and refurbishing um, certified airplanes so um, you know the useful load on these Bearhawks is competing with a 185 uh, and a 206 um, especially the newer ones the, the the ones with all the stuff in them and the newer 206s there's a, this has more useful load than a new 206 off the line does um, and so you're you are a lot of airplane for the money and the capability is something that no no airplane on the market can touch. And so that's how we ended up with the Bearhawk 5. If you guys have any questions, um, leave them below. If you guys have comments or um, you want to suggest other airplanes or um, you want to correct one of, one of my airplane calculations on here, feel free to do so. Um, but yeah, if you guys are interested more in what we're doing, our website's linked below. Um, and hopefully we'll be flying soon. We're waiting on a motor. I'm not announcing what motor we're putting in it until I have it in hand and I know it's all going to work out. But I'm super excited about it. It's a new um, new motor, um, running EFII, making good horsepower. It'll be a really, really cool install. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.